I just locked the door and the alarm beeped. I can open the door without the alarm going on. No puddle light, no dome light. Door is locked. If I unlock it, open the door and get in the car, the door should remain unlocked. I'm going to put a timestamp in here uh, because after 30 seconds, if the vehicle thinks that nobody entered the vehicle, this was, is going to lock again. So again, it should not lock. So pretend that you got into the car and you're on the phone and uh, you're just sitting in there. There you go. See, it locked again. Door lock. Time to replace it. It's a T20. You want to loosen it and then you want to push it in and that removes the lock cylinder. It just locked again. So in order to get around it constantly locking you have to unlock the vehicle and then turn the key to the on position Now it should not lock anymore. It should not auto auto lock anymore. You have to release the pull cable from the handle. There's some T20s down here. One. Two. This cover comes off, Phillips. Make sure there's no other screws anywhere, and the panel should pop off at this point. And then you lift it to unhook it at the top. Disconnect the uh, cable from the door. Disconnect all the switches. Uh. Alarm LED. Puddle light. And of course, now we have to get the window up, so I'm gonna have to reattach the uh, window button. We have to remove the access plugs. Come on, it never gives up a fight like this. One of these guys. Insert the key, turn the key on. And then raise the window until you see the clamps. Good enough. 
and disconnect them at this point again. Set the panel aside. Always mark the screw with the clamp. And you only need to loosen it two turns, it should be enough. I think that's a T30. One, two. One, two. Ah, uh, we'll go two and a half. Why not? And you just push in a little bit. Try to break the window free. Then you have to secure the window in the up position. However you want to do it. You can use duct tape. Or masking tape, body shop masking tape. These suction cups seem to work pretty good. T30 Torx, same as for the clamp. Looks like somebody jizzed all over those bolts. Mm. You disconnect the uh, module. This is actually the uh, door module slash power window reg motor. This module tells the door module to open and close. Come on. <clears throat> now we gotta take these two off. M8 triple square. This lock module is mounted to this panel, so when removing the panel, the lock module or lock actuator will come with it. I'm going to move all of this because uh, it'll make things easier uh, in terms of more slack in the wiring harness. tab that you push and then you can slide this off. It was the same way over here. Radio, sorry, speaker. might be better like this. So now the door panel, the regulator panel should pop forward.
sure to tilt it and pull it to the right. Make sure it doesn't get caught anywhere. Disconnect the lock actuator. Push the connector up and then pull back on this lever and then pull the connector. It's a really simple design. I don't know why people have problems with it. But you push first. While you're pushing, pull on the tab and then pull the connector. Okay, now with the regulator kind of all disconnected, we can work with this on the bench. And these two retaining pins, just knock them out. It's just two little plastic pins. This bracket can then be pried out. Push the grommet through. Same for the door lock rod. Now's the time to inspect the cable. If it looks rusty, now's the time to do it. There's a little bit of rust here. You can also lubricate it a little bit. It's one of those catch 22s. Uh, you lubricate it, then it'll draw moisture into the uh, sheathing here, into those tubes, and you can have problems down the road. This looks like an original one still, so, you know, if uh, money is no object, or if you're thinking that now is the time to do it, it saves you time going back in later. Inspect the panel. You can see this one's all chewed up here. Uh, and it just tears once as moisture gets to it. You can see there's moisture that gets to it and then it dries out and it tears. So you may want to reline it um, somehow so that it seals. So, you know, you can, a, a simple quote over the phone doesn't usually, doesn't cover everything because you don't know what you're looking at until you get right in there. Uh, release cable. Use a screwdriver, get under it, and pry it up. You gotta turn it 90 degrees to unhook. And also the door release cable for the door handle. And this bracket you wanna reuse. You can see this piece is still okay, but this one is broken. Um, it should still mount into place. If it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal, but it can help with stability. Let's drill out the rivet. Once you have the new one, you just assemble in reverse of the removal. If you don't have a rivet, you can use a, a zip strap to hold it in place. And you see, that's all it needs. doesn't matter that this is a bit loose because once it's sitting in the vehicle it's going to be secure. Door handle release cable. The 
inside door handle release cable. The lock, the actuator rod, or for the locking mechanism. I always fiddle with this one. hook it in, carefully hook it in under this piece of plastic. And then this gets mounted back here again. This way, of course. the grommets are sitting correctly. of these was actually functioning or doing its job so we'll do the same thing just have one of them holding it in place uh, the other one just broke off too so we're gonna do something else now some duct tape across here that'll seal the openings. Okay, assemble in the reverse of removal. Yeah, that looks like an original still. As for this here, I'm gonna run some um, body body putty uh, just some rubber compound that'll seal it the putty is similar to this stuff here it just takes up space and then when you when you push the seal against the body panel uh, it'll seal nicely check for any loose debris in here that can cause rattling and like I said installation is in a reverse of removal Okay, once everything is back together, you can already see that the puddle light works. Let me just close it up. So that's already a good indication. The dome lights come on. And the mirror light as well. I'm gonna lock the door. The horn just beeped. Verification that the alarm is armed. I'm gonna open up the uh, door now. <coughs> Good, and now when we unlock the vehicle, 30 seconds later, if we do not open the door, the uh, alarm will set. It's a scenario where you, you uh, go out to the vehicle in the morning, you forgot your cup of coffee, you unlock the car, and then you go back inside the house. The vehicle will lock again uh, as a safety, uh, just to keep thieves from getting in. There you go. So the door just locked. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Unlock. Open the door. Dome light is on. Now the alarm module, the comfort module, thinks that the, a person got into the vehicle. 
So we're just going to wait 30 seconds now and it should stay unlocked. The suspense is killing me. What did the cow say as it was about to uh, pass the horse on the farm? It said move over. And I think that was about 30 seconds. So you can see it, it did not lock because it's anticipating a person in the vehicle that's about to start the vehicle. Self-awareness, Skynet, just around the corner. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.